So welcome to the end of the semester, basically. So our final exam is a week from today. So everything between now and then obviously is just review. And people say, what is the most effective way to review? Should I go back through the book and just study everything? Well, sure, if you have another three or four months, yeah, but you have seven days. And if you haven't actually started preparing in earnest, you don't have a lot of time. So I always found the most effective way to prepare for an exam is do things like retake your quizzes. Well, preparing for a final, I say retake your exams. You have three exams and you have three practice tests that give you a pretty thorough um, set of problems that you know are eligible types of questions. Plus, we have the last material from the graph theory. Now, because we had two lectures that did not appear on a particular exam, that doesn't mean that those two lectures somehow are going to dominate the field and the final exam will be more of that than anything else. I, I know we've all had that class where the last material presented in the course ended up being you know a high percentage of the final because it never showed up on an exam. No. We have 25 lectures. Think of it as everything being essentially equally weighted. Another way to think about it simply is imagine if every single class we took the single most important point taught in that class. Now, a lot of classes we had more than one major thing, but if we could say narrow it to one thing in each class, now let's come up with a really good question, then the final exam would essentially be that. The, the top question from every class throughout the semester. And no one lecture, therefore, is more important than any other lecture. And the fact that you have two quizzes remaining is means when you walk into the final exam, there will be no material that you haven't seen either on an exam or on a quiz or both. OK, there's no mystery material. There's nothing going to come out of the woodwork where you'll say, gee, I've never seen that problem before. I, I don't want to do that. That That is bad news. All right, so today's quiz. I want to go over the problems because they're fairly simple. And again, there are a lot of possible answers. So I want to structure it. So the first question, I had to print it out because I don't remember what the questions were, was draw a graph with five vertices of degree one, one, two, two, and four. Well, the first question is, is this even possible? That's really the question. Can anybody tell me why you know it is or why you know it isn't possible before you even start? This is very important. Since all the degrees add up to an even. Perfect answer, Omar. That's exactly it. If I made it so that the sum of the degrees was odd, then it's actually impossible. And that's, I don't want to say that's a trick question. So the question could be, is it possible to draw this graph? And if so, go ahead and draw the graph. Now, vertices of degree one, what does that mean? Well, that means they're not connected to, they're only connected to one other thing. Okay. So one possibility would be, I'm going to draw the five vertices. OK, I'm going to make it easy on myself. Now, I find that the easiest way to do this is I start with the biggest one. So I'm going to like that. Now, remember, answers are not unique. Answers are not unique. There's a, you can do this, and you can rearrange it and rotate it. Now, I've got my four. But if you notice, if I don't do anything with these two, I also have my ones. Now, how can I make it so that I have two twos without affecting any of these three? Well, how about if I just do that? Now, if you look at that, you go, okay, two, two, four, one. Okay, we did it. Now, is that the only graph? No, that's the first one I came up with because that one required the least amount of thinking. And that's, I'm a big fan of that type of answer. Okay, now the second problem, again, any graph you drew that satisfied this criteria is a correct graph. There's not one answer. All right, the second one was two, three, and five. We want vertices of degrees two, three, and five. Now that one's a little trickier because I don't have that many vertices. So let's start by putting our vertices down. Now, I'm gonna do it like the laziest way humanly possible. All right. There's my two, okay? Like Omar said, these add up to an even number so I know it's possible. That's my two. I need to make this, let's say I wanna make this one of the three. Anybody got a suggestion? How can I make that of degree three? I can connect it to here a couple times. That's legal. Or I can be really lazy. Would that be legal? Remember, a loop, it's one, two, three. Now I need to make this one of degree five. Oh, how am I going to do that? I, I can't connect this to the other guys because that'll increase their degree. Tell me a way I can make this five. Anybody? You put two loops on. Two loops. 
I mean, that's boring. There. Now, I, this is not my favorite graph, that, but that's kind of like the laziest thing I can do, throwing loops in there. Now, a better version, I'm going to give you a better version. I think most of you like, like a little bit better. So I've got a situation, again, I, I want the, I want, oops, I kind of missed there. I want them all, I want them all connected to each other. Okay. Now, let's say that's my two. But I have two, but I need that to be a three. Therefore, I can't put a loop. But what I can do, ah, so there's my two, there's my three, there's my three. I'm going to still have to put a loop. I like that one a little better because, you know, a little more interesting. But these are extremely different graphs, but they're both correct graphs. And that's the point. As long as it matches this criteria and no matter what numbers you put up there, if they add up to an even number, it is legal, it is possible, and any graph that satisfies that is a correct graph. Okay, very, very important that we recognize that part. Now, the next one is fairly simple, but we have to understand what the definition is. So I asked you for K34. So first of all, what, is, what does it mean when you have two? See, if I only have one, that just means there's that many vertices and they're all connected to each other. So in other words, K3 would just be a triangle, okay? K4, we think of as like a rectangle with the diagonals, you know. But what is K3 comma four? Does anybody remember what that means? You can just blurt it out. Uh, they have three vertices on one side and four vertices on the other. Yeah, yeah, that, this is the easiest way to interpret this. It's. I think of this like there's four houses on this side of the street, there's three houses on that side of the street, and you want every possible way of connecting the houses on this side to the houses on this side. But these guys are not connected to each other. These guys are not connected to each other. So I just start off, I go one, two, three, four. Oh, okay, that's all I gotta do. You know, it's kind of a cool little, you know, drawing. Now, the fact that these cross is not important. The fact that they cross, the intersection of the edges does not create a vertex. That is a common misconception. No, nope. these three are vertices, these four are vertices. Where they intersect, that would just mean like wires are being crossed. That doesn't create a new junction out there in, you know, in the real world. So this would be the simplest possible way of drawing this graph. Like, like Omar says, three, four. Now, the second part of the question was, what is the total degree of the graph? Hmm. How many edges did I draw? Let's start simple. What's the number of edges? This makes it easy. The number of edges is three times four. Do you all agree with that? The number of edges is just three times four. I'm matching three things with four things. This goes back to our combinatorics, counting principles. So I have 12 edges. Does that mean the total degree is 12? No. No. What's the total degree then? Times two to make it even, so 24. Well, actually 12 is already even, but times two, yeah. why? Because that's connect. Because this edge counts as a degree for this vertex and for this vertex. Okay, so another way of looking at this is if you look at each vertex, at every single vertex, if I counted up the number of things leaving that vertex, It'd be four plus four plus four plus three plus three plus three plus three. That would be this times two. Now, I, I don't want to sit there and count. That, that, would, that would take too long. Because if you're going to sit there and count, what if I made it, you know, K300 comma 400? You know, you don't want to do that. So there's 12 edges. But remember, one edge connects two vertices in this case. So that edge counts in two different places for degree. So the degree is always twice the number of edges as we, we saw in this case here, okay? So the, the number of edges was 12, the degree is times two, okay? Now the last part, I, I love the last question because a lot of folks will try to draw pictures and come up with all sorts of complicated versions and now well, that, that's okay, but if you're gonna do things by drawing a picture, if you're trying to use a picture as a proof, I said, I have nine people. What if I have 9,000 people? I don't want to rely on a picture to prove my point. So I have nine people and I'm asking, is it possible for each person to have four friends? Now, 
there's no absolute way of doing this, but the simplest way of thinking about this, I have nine people. So let's use a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now, for this guy to have four friends means I just need to be able to draw four edges from that person. Okay. And the four edges, those would be the person's four friends. Okay, great. Can I draw four edges coming out of every single one of these vertices? Now, I don't want to do it. It's, it's, I, I can, but that would be really, you know, mind boggling after a while. So if I'm sitting here, going, okay, well, let me connect these and these, let's say, and this, this person likes those people. Okay. Now this guy here, he likes those people and maybe that person. And I start doing this. There's a lot of ways I can connect these. No question. That's not the question is how many ways can I connect these? The question is, can I? Is it actually possible that every one of these vertices has exactly four edges? You see, I said, I have nine people. I want four friends. But put your nine people in a circle and say, okay, now pick your four friends. And the next person, pick your four friends and so on. Is it humanly possible? Yes, it is. Because each person can be thought of as a vertex. And your four friends are the four edges you would draw connecting it. And that means that you would have what? How many edges would you would you have in that case? Or I should say the, the degree, not how many edges, because remember the edge, it connects both people. But what would be the total degree if each person had four edges coming out of them? 56. You have a nine and a four. Did you say 56 or 36? Oh, 36. 36. I said 56, like, wait a minute. 36. Now, there's not 36 edges, because remember, one edge connects two friends. So there would be, see, in other words, I drew four edges coming out of one of these, but one of those edges is going to now come out of this one. So you don't count an edge twice, but you count the degree twice. So if I have nine people and I want four friends, if I connect, and by the way, there are several correct ways I can connect them. It's possible because nine times four means there would be a degree of 36. 36 is even. Based on the first two problems, we know it's legal because 36 is even, which now gets us to the last question, which is, I have nine people and I want to up it. You know, everybody wants to, you know, friend somebody else. Let's, let's use that terminology. So is it possible for each of those nine people to have exactly five friends in the group? So may, basically, I want to draw one more edge coming out of each guy or each person. Is that possible? Uh, no, because it'll be 45, which is an odd or not even. Exactly, because my total degree would be nine times five or 45, which is odd. That's not possible. So problem four, yes, it is possible. Problem five, it's not possible. And it all determines, it's all, it's all based on the degree. That's not complicated. Now, the problem is if you try to base it on a picture, and I had people do this, I remember last semester, um, people would try to do the problem using a picture. And, <laughs> and the answers that I was getting is, Yes, I was able to come up with a picture. It's true. I couldn't figure out a picture. It can't be true. That's really not mathematically very valid. That, that would be the equivalent of, I don't know how to take the derivative of this function. Therefore, there's no derivative. I don't know how to integrate this function. Therefore, there's no integral. I don't know how to solve this equation. Therefore, there's no solution. I can't factor this polynomial. Therefore, it's prime. I don't know where you live. Therefore, you're homeless. <laughs> you see the utter absurdity of that type of logic. I couldn't figure it out. Therefore, there can't be an answer because I'm the smartest person who ever lived. I can't figure it out means I don't know what I'm doing. Probably not that there's no answer. No. So the inability to come up with a picture has nothing to do with whether there's an answer or not, because there might be a picture, there might not, but that's not how you answer the question. Um, Omar's on a, on a roll today. It's all about degree. So if I had given you a ridiculous large number of people and, and potential friends, you're just saying, hey, how many, you know, when I'm connecting these, am I going to get an odd or an even degree? That's it. It's, it's actually that simple. And if you guys did the reading in the earlier, I think it was uh, lecture 24, it, if you do the reading, they talk about the handshake problem. It's the same thing. It's, you know, how many ways can I shake people's hands? How many ways can I have friends? And it has to be an even degree. Okay, so hopefully this was a simple, simple task for you. <clears throat> now, between now and the final, this is really the big, big thing. Okay, what can you rely on? What sorts of questions? Well, this is a tricky thing. And I say this in all seriousness. When you're a student 
and you're sitting in the chair on the other side of the room and the instructor is presenting information, I'll use any class, but particularly a math class, you have to say everything being presented in a class must be important, otherwise they wouldn't have bothered presenting it. Sometimes we don't present things because we leave it up to the reading. But essentially, something's been presented, it's been asked in a quiz, it's been asked in an exam, obviously it's important. But let's say there's been a hundred ideas expressed in a particular class, and in our class that's probably reasonable, hundred ideas. Are they all of equal importance? From your point of view, because you're accepting all of this information, you're saying, yeah, they're all important. They're all equally important. But from my point of view, I say, no, 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 no. They're not equally important. There is definitely a hierarchy. There are things that are way more important than other things. There are things that are literally minutia. They're detail oriented. If, if we were in a calculus class, right? My calculus one final is next week. They're constant, gonna concentrate on limits, derivatives, integrals, applications. But we did so many other things, yeah, and they were minor things to prepare us to be able to do limits and derivatives and integrals and things like that. So in a discrete math class, I say, concentrate on the big ticket items, concentrate on the big questions. So if you were going back and looking at a quiz or an exam and you saw problems of great point value and you saw problems, you know, those two point questions, those two point questions are probably not final exam questions. <laughs> true or false? That's probably not a final exam question. An entire truth table? That's probably a final exam question because that's something that required a little bit of work. So on the exam that we just had, you know, I, I had a question, for example, um, here's a perfect question. Question number 25, I said, uh, if you order a different bowl each day for 40 days, must you have the same flavor twice? Yes. <laughs> and that problem was worth the same as every other problem. The answer is yes. Most of you said yes, because 40 is greater than 36. That's it. That, that problem probably took most of you about four seconds. I don't think that would be a final exam question just because there's not much to it, but it could be in conjunction, let's say, with the previous questions with how many, you know, we had to do a count and then so that there could be a question with an ABC. Oh, OK, then that would make sense Now, because pigeonhole principle, let's face it, that's not exactly ever a long problem because there's not a calculation involved. <clears throat> so in general, if a problem, I don't want to say the hardest problems, no, no, but the problem's got to have some substance. There's got to actually be something you have to do within the problem in order to answer the question. But in some cases, it might be an ABC thing because each problem, big picture is big, but the little picture is too small, not for a final question. And so the final exam will look a lot like this exams where I'm giving you a whole bunch of questions and you're going to do, I think, I don't have it in front of me, I think I made it so they're all equally weighted, the same kind of thing. But the main thing is, is to accumulate answers. Now, what most of you did, and it was very wise on this last test, is I said you needed to do 20 questions. So did people stop at 20 questions? No, no, the average was something like 24 questions. Most people did extra questions. And that was wise because you say, well, I did 20. I, there was still time on the clock. You know, it won't hurt if I do an extra one or two problems because I don't know if any of my first 20 were great or not. OK, nobody wrote a perfect test. A perfect test would be a perfect answer to all, was it 20, 30 questions? No, nobody wrote a perfect test, but there were actually multiple perfect scores. So there were several people that <clears throat> had 20 perfect answers and a perfect extra credit, although they may have had flaws along the way. And that's kind of nice to say, well, I made mistakes along the way and I still ended up with a perfect score. And that's, you know, that's kind of a good thing. Um, the final exam, first of all, it's everything we've done for the whole semester, but nothing is asked twice. Now, what I mean by that is on any particular exam, I think the first two exams were over eight lectures and this exam was over seven lectures. You took a test, but it only had a handful of lectures. So I could ask similar questions. You did multiple combinations on this exam. You had more than one pigeonhole principle question on this exam. On the final exam, you're never gonna see anything twice because I've gotta get in all 25 lectures into this test. And so if I asked things twice, this test would be eight hours long, okay? So really it's everything we've covered all semester is fair game. Concentrate on, on main concepts, you know, not, not a yes and no question, but an explain, you know, you might have to do a proof or something. So I would go back, if I'm preparing for this exam, I would retake exam one and grade myself. The reason I put keys 
out there for quizzes and exams is not because it's convenient to me. Oh my gosh, no, it's a headache. I put keys out there so that you can periodically test yourself and then grade yourself and say, if I got it right, do I still remember how to do it? And if I missed it, have I figured it out? That's what it is. And the nice thing is nobody remembers the answers they gave to earlier work. I mean, it's too long ago. So when you retake a quiz or you retake an exam or you retake a practice test, it's as if those questions are brand new because again, too much time has passed. Nobody remembers exactly what they did. So what I would suggest also is when you're doing this, don't have the original exam sitting right in front of you because if you got it right, then you're probably just gonna write the same thing. No, no, you wanna retake an exam from scratch, grade yourself, then compare it to the original because the most important thing in a review, the most important thing, and this is the part where a lot of people have trouble, if you got it right at any point in the semester, you have to get it right on the final because it means you know it. But there's a high probability that you may have forgotten it because you haven't done it in a while. The most important problems are the ones that you got right in the past and you have to ensure you still got them right today. A lot of folks will say, oh, I got an A on exam one. I don't need to look at it. Yet you may not have done any problems of that nature in three months. There's no guarantee you're going to remember things from three months ago when you sit down and take the final next week. So you've got to go back and, and you know, make sure. Um, the, the most common error in preparation for a final, and I see this at every level of mathematics. I've been doing this for a while. And my experience is almost 100% of all human beings when left to their own devices will prepare incorrectly for a, a math or science final. How do I know this? Because I, I've seen, I've given 10,000, at least 10,000 final exams. Most people study for a final exam which tells you right now you've wasted every moment of time. Does anybody know why that's an absolute waste of your time to study for a final exam? It's, it's the word I'm using. Because what does studying imply? Anybody? When you're studying, it means you're still trying to what? Learn. Learn it. I'm sorry, it's too late for that. <laughs> if you haven't gotten it in four months, are you going to teach it to yourself the day before the final? I mean, think about this. If in four months you haven't gotten a concept, then you're probably not going to have that concept for the final, but it might not matter because you might get to choose. But what most people do is they spend their entire time trying to teach themselves the stuff they never got. And they're not going to get it, by the way. Nobody's successful at that because if in four months you haven't gotten it, what makes you think you're going to do it the night before the test? Now, if you are absent for a lecture and you still never have filled in that hole, yeah, at some point you want to fill in that hole. But there may be a concept that you just never got. It, it just never made sense to you. Well, you know what? At most, that's one question, first of all, and that might not even be a question that shows up on the final, so you might be wasting your time from that standpoint, but you can't sacrifice your review to try to learn something. You see, you don't study for a final, you review for a final. Review means that anything you've ever known, you have to make sure it's still right there on the forefront, and that's the most critical part, and I have found over the years, people will tell me, you know, I spent this many, you know, fill in the blank, some absurd number of hours studying for the final and I still bombed it. Well, that's why you didn't review. You tried to teach yourself stuff. So here's a simple rule of thumb. If you're, let's say you're an 80% student in this class that, that, you know, your average over the whole course was, was 80% and you had ample time to prepare for the final. You had all the time in the world. You started preparing over spring break. You started redoing things, you know, then if you've had, let's say you've been preparing for a month. So you walk into the final as prepared as anybody could be. And you've been 80% all semester. What is a reasonable expectation for a final exam? Anybody? You're going to get an 80%? 80%. In other words, the best you can expect is what you've done all semester. Why? Because it means you remembered everything you learned. I would say the person who had an 80% semester and an 80% final, had an absolutely incredible final because they demonstrated on the last day of class that they remembered everything they learned. I've given over 10,000 finals. I mean, you know what the average performance on final exams for all people? By the way, I started keeping track of this when I taught high school from 10th grade through college. And by the way, this is true at universities too. Do you know what the average performance on a final exam for math is? One letter grade lower than the class. An A student will write a B final, a B student will write a C final, and so on. The average performance on a final is about a one letter grade drop because people aren't quite ready. They didn't spend enough time preparing. That's why the final is only worth a certain percentage. So if you're an A student and you wrote a B final, you're not going to lose your A. It's not half the grade. See, that's, that's why finals are limited in their, in their uh, 
I don't say their importance, but they're in their in their magnitude, let's say. So if that A student writes an A final, we say, great, they remembered everything. Because you want to know when you're walking out of the class, did I remember everything I've learned, especially if it's a prerequisite for the next class? That Calc 1 student, I've had Calc 1 students get an A in a class, but write a C final. I'm worried about that student because they're saying on the last day of class, I forgot <laughs> um, a significant amount of material. And now I have a break before the next semester. That means they're not walking into that next class as an A student. They're walking into that next class maybe as a C student. That, that's not a good thing. So if you have ample time to prepare, so how the heck are you supposed to improve your grade? Because every single person in this class, if you missed something on a previous exam or quiz, there are things that you have figured out. After you missed something, you go, oh, okay, that's how I was supposed to do it. Now I've got that thing. You, everybody in here will have improvement because you've picked up things along the way. So if you review everything you've learned and you've picked up things along the way, that's how you have a final exam that improves. And, but in most classes, I have very, very few people improve on a final. Those are people who really, really you know, worked hard and prepared early. Now, the one thing that, again, my peers hate it when I say things like this, but almost 100% of the people it, everywhere, every school on planet Earth, when they walk in the final, almost 100% of the people walk out of that final with the exact same grade they walked in with. I will have on the average one or two people per semester in all my classes combined, two at the most, where their final exam actually will change their grade. How could that be? Because people walk out of the final exactly the same grade they went in. Your final is only worth a certain percentage. You walked into the final with a B, you got to be in the course. You walked into the final with a C, you got to see in the course. The only way your final can affect your final grade is if, if it's otherworldly incredibly good and you were able to raise your grade or it's otherworldly incredibly bad. But in my class, that final ends up not counting because your final only counts if, it if it's better than your lowest exam and five lowest quizzes. So nobody's final can lower their grade, but your final has to be absolutely incredible to raise your grade. And I might have one or two of those in a semester that are that incredible. If you're right on the borderline, you're right at 80%, you're right at 90%. Well, the final exam is going to be your final. It's not changing your grade. It's, you know, you're on the fence. It's deciding which side of the fence you're going to, to end up on. So from that standpoint, people get way too stressed out over finals. Really, the idea is to maintain but if you're a borderliner, obviously, and in, our, in this class, if you've had one exam that was significantly different from the others, maybe you have two really good exams and one not so good exam, well, that final exam is gonna replace that the crummy one. And so all of you at this point, if you haven't, should be going to Canvas, put the cursor over your point total. Okay, now, first of all, if you've reached the threshold for an A, B, or a C, the point threshold, okay, it's on the syllabus, it's, you know, 90% uh, of whatever the possible points are in the course. If you've already reached that threshold, you're guaranteed that grade. You can't somehow lose that grade. But if you are only 30 or 40 points away from that threshold, you can get there on those last two quizzes, okay? If you're not really close to the next threshold, but you have one exam that's very different from the others, or you've missed several quizzes, then when you drop the lowest exam and five lowest quizzes, you might find I only need a C on the final to raise my grade to a B, or I might only need a B on the final to raise my grade to an A. And that's, that's pretty powerful. It's pretty cool stuff. So between now and really the weekend, you have to make a commitment. Some of you will not have to take the final because you've already earned the grade and you're okay with your grade. Okay. Now, if that grade's not an A, I'd really wish you would take the final and try to get the A. But somebody here might be right now at 79.5%. And those last two quizzes bump you up to 80%. Hey, I would rejoice. I, I made the B and, and the gap to the A is probably not realistic. You know, I would have to have a perfect final to raise that again. Although why not try? What I don't like hearing, and I hear this in every class is, well, I'll take my B because I still have my physics final, my linear algebra final, and my OCHEM final, and all these other finals that I got to put all my energies into. I understand that. I don't like it. I'd rather you put them all into mine. But if you've already secured a good grade in this class, I, I get that you have to do the other thing. You need to commit really right away. And here's the reason. You cannot waffle and then on Monday of next week say, yeah, I think I'll take the final. <laughs> it's not going to go so well because you haven't started to prepare. You, you need to already be well into your preparation right now because of just the sheer volume of material we've covered. Now, if you choose not to take the final and you say, nope, I'm going to go with my grade, 
whether it be an A or something else, I would appreciate it if you just simply sent me an email. Do not assume anything on my end. I assume every person's taking the final unless they tell me. So if you've chosen not to take the final, just send me an email saying, I'm not going to take the final. That's cool. Um, I may try to guilt trip you into taking it anyway. I may show up at your house the morning of the final and drag you out. out. But no, if, you, if you've chosen not to, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, the day of the final... When somebody doesn't show up, I, I actually get kind of concerned. I start checking the police plotter, you know, start listening for ambulances and you know, that kind of thing, um, wondering why aren't they here? So um, between now and the weekend, if you haven't committed, you really have to, whether it's I don't want to take the final or I do want to take the final, don't waffle, you know. Now, some of you are in a position where, like I said before, you are less than two quiz totals away. When you looked at your grade, you said, wow, I'm only 50 points away from the threshold of an A, B, or C, and I'm going to do a good job on those last two quizzes. Great. That could bump you over the edge. What I would do is say, I'm going to prepare as if I am taking the final. Then if I get information that I end up not needing to take the final, rejoice. Now, our last quiz is due on Monday. But if you don't want to wait till Monday to turn it in, this is what this is the only time I'll do this. If you want to turn in that last quiz, let's say Friday or Saturday, I will try to get to it early and and give you feedback and say, yes, you, you, you're over the hump because you don't want to find out Monday afternoon that you do or don't have to take the final based on that last quiz. That's, you know, that's tough. Now, I'm a little bit behind from the standpoint. I gave two exams on Monday and one on Tuesday. I am not quite halfway through the second of the three exams. So I won't be finished with all of the exams till probably tomorrow or Friday at the very earliest. And I'm, I'm the fastest person on planet earth, but just simply giving you the feedback on each step, that took three hours to send emails with, <laughs> yeah. So I won't be getting to any of the quizzes really before the weekend, but I'll get to all of them probably by Saturday. And I'm doing this as a, as a favor. If you're that person who just needs your quiz score to determine if you're taking the final or not, I want you to have that number before the end of the weekend, just so you don't have to hang around. Now, the other thing is, most of you are pretty good in that when you turn in a good quiz, you know you turned in a good quiz. You know, I, I know I got them right. That's really not an issue. But you still want to have that confirmation. Because sometimes it may be that you just misinterpreted something, and you gave yourself credit for that answer, and then you find out later, oh, I, I didn't get it. Now, there is no new material. There is no lecture going on. So from now until the final exam, it's essentially, think of this as office hours, as open office hours. So if you have questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording right now.